heart failure has become, in recent times, a growing public epidemic with increasing incidence and prevalence. Heart failure patients are frail patients which often suffer from recurrent hospitalizations and mortality remains high in spite of advances achieved in the past decades. Because of this, there is a need to understand risk factors and risk stratifiers to better identify the patients that are going to have a better or a worse outcome. In routine clinical practice, we use a number of variables which include age, female sex, ischemic etiology of heart failure, left ventricular ejection fraction, New York Heart Association functional class, diabetes mellitus, renal function, ACE inhibitor treatment, beta blockade treatment, and also some biomarkers like a sodium and hemoglobin. All these variables we use to stratify the risk of an individual patient. Yet, all these 11 variables are not always enough to predict a patient's prognosis. Therefore, we need novel biomarkers to better delineate and clarify which is the prognosis of our patient. In recent years, a number of biomarkers have been identified that are helping us to better stratify a patient's prognosis. We have performed a study with three of these novel biomarkers. NT-proBNP, which is a marker of myocardial stretch, high sensitivity troponin T, which is a biomarker of myocyte necrosis, and high sensitivity ST2, which is a biomarker of myocardial fibrosis and remodeling. In this study, we evaluated 876 consecutive patients attended in a multidisciplinary heart failure unit. The mean age of these patients was 70.3 years, and the mean left ventricular ejection fraction was 34%. The follow-up of this patient was 40 months, and 311 patients died during this mean follow-up. When we performed statistical analysis of the 11 conventional variables together with the three biomarkers, we found that both in the bivariable analysis as well as in the multivariable analysis, the three novel biomarkers were independent predictors of death. We use a novel bootstrap system to obtain a cutoff point for each of these biomarkers. When we do two by two comparisons using Kaplan-Meier curves, we realize that the worst prognosis is for the subgroup of patients who have high troponin T levels combined with high ST2 levels. And the lowest uh, mortality is for those patients who have low troponin T and low ST2 levels. In, in the bivariate analysis, when either troponin T or ST2 are below the cutoff point, then we realize that nt BMP added additional information when combined with the other two biomarkers. However, when the two novel biomarkers, high sensitivity troponin T and ST2, were above the cutoff point, then nt BMP has very limited value and does not provide additional information. Next, we performed a series of measurements of performance, which included discrimination, calibration, and reclassification analysis. The net reclassification improvement was best with a combination of ST2 and troponin T high sensitive. Whenever we added nt BMP to these other two biomarkers, NRI, net reclassification improvement, was reduced as compared to only two of the, of the three biomarkers. In this study, we found that when combining only two of these novel biomarkers, the best results were obtained for ST2 and high sensitivity troponin T. Mortality increased linearly with the increasing number of elevated biomarkers. However, importantly, the elevation of two biomarkers, which are high sensitivity troponin T and ST2, identified more patients that died than the combination of three random biomarkers. Therefore, two biomarkers, ST2 and troponin T, appear to be better stratifiers of prognosis than the combination of the three biomarkers. We now have a novel generation of biomarkers, high sensitivity troponin T and ST2, 
which are easily measurable in our routine practice, which provide additional information to stratify the prognosis of patients with heart failure. The incorporation of these biomarkers for the prediction of death could be accomplished quickly in routine clinical practice, and we believe that both ST2 and high sensitivity troponin T, in addition to NT pro BNP in selected cases, may be very useful combinations to better guide and treat in the future our patients with the double objective of reducing hospitalizations and prolonged survival. The patients appearing in this video gave their verbal permission to be included in this presentation. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.